Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating these beautiful framed tile pieces using the silver tiles from the Dollar Tree and low cost wood. Now these are such a great find at the Dollar Tree and I'm happy to show you how to make these into a unique wall decor piece. Now as always, all of the projects I create have the complete supply list in the description box so you can use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy seeing all of the ways to paint and customize these for your space. So now let's just jump right into the projects. Now for this project, we will need one of these peel and stick tiles for each panel you wish to create. And these come in a silver tone and they are available for a dollar each from the Dollar Tree. We we'll also need one one by two for each of the frames and these are available in eight foot lengths from the Home Depot for about $1.78. So we're going to go ahead and get the wood cut and we're going to need two pieces at 23 inches. Now I decided to go with mitered corners for my pieces. So these will be 23 inches. And then we'll cut two smaller pieces at five and a half inches. Now keep in mind that the length indicated here is the length at the inside of the miter corners on each piece of the wood as shown here. Now as an alternative, you can definitely join these together at a 90 degree angle as shown here. Now this is the easiest way to join the pieces, but the cuts will vary slightly. Now I did decide to go ahead and do mine at a 45 degree angle. I just think it has a more clean and professional finish. Now if you do decide to go with that 90 degree angle and just join the corners as, at a right angle as shown here, the longer side will need to be cut at 26 inches straight. And then the top and bottom of the centers will be at five and a half inches straight. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start working on our wood frame. So go ahead, go ahead and grab your top and bottom pieces. And what I'm gonna do is take one of the long pieces and one of the short pieces and start building up my frame. Now I am gonna be using my wood stick hot glue to join my pieces together with a temporary bond because I will be following up with screws a little later. Now I love to use my glue just to kind of get that grab and hold and it only takes about five seconds for it to bond. And I'm going to bond one of the short pieces on the each end of the longer piece. Now once your two shorter pieces are on each end, here is what they'll look like. And then all we have to do is take our long side and close in our frame by placing it on the other side. Now just add your wood glue to each one of those ends and press it into place. And now we have one solid frame ready to go. And now we're just gonna go ahead and secure it with our screws. Now for this project, I have chosen to use some number six, one and a quarter inch wood screws to secure my frame together. Now before we add our screws to the frame, I am going to be drilling pilot holes to prevent our wood from splitting. Now my drill bit is a 3 32nd inch drill bit and I'm just going to drill straight into the side of the frame making sure it goes through the two layers of wood. Now if you do have a pocket hole tool or a brad nailer, please feel free to use those tools as well. But this by far is the easiest way to do this. So once all your pilot holes are drilled in all of the corners, you can go ahead and start applying all of your wood screws. Now I like to first start by hand threading those in just to make sure they will be going in nice and straight and then following up with my drill to secure them all in place until they're nice and flush with the wood as shown here. And then just repeat this all the way around your frame. And now all of our screws are in all four corners of our frame and it's nice and solid. 
Now for this frame, what I'm going to do is I am going to be staining it with my Memwax Jacobian stain. Now when applying a stain, I'm just going to take my rag and I am going to apply stain to the uh, front of the frame and each one of the insides and outsides of the frame. Now if you want to stain the back, that's definitely optional, but I will be leaving the back of my project unstained. Now here is the stain all over my project after I've put it on and wiped it off with a rag and it turned out really great. And now we just let this sit to the side to dry. Now I did make two additional frames because I wanted one in white and I painted it in white chalk paint. And I painted an another frame black and I used black acrylic paint. Okay, so now we can start working on our tiles. So we're just gonna go ahead and start unpackaging the tiles and removing all of the um, outer insert. And we are gonna leave the peel and stick on the back of these tiles as we work with them. Now I'm only gonna be painting two of these tiles and leaving one silver. So one I'm gonna be painting with this satin ivory spray paint and the other I will be painting with some white satin spray paint. Now here are both of our pieces all nice and sprayed and ready to go for our projects. So the first tile we will be working on is the ivory tile. Now I'll be going in with some Waverly Antique Wax on this tile to kind of give it an aged look. So I'm taking a really soft bristled brush and I am brushing on all of that antique wax all over the tile in a random pattern. And then I'm going in with a folded paper towel and I'm just going over all of the waxed areas, just kind of lightly brushing that wax in, making sure that wax is highlighting all of the details in the, in the tile. Now here is my first coat and then once this dries I'm going to go in with another coat and wipe it off and as you add more layers the details really start to pop. So once that one is done I'm going to grab my white tile. Now I am going to go in and highlight this tile with some black acrylic paint. So I'm going to use my technique where I use my craft stick to kind of highlight all of the details. I absolutely love using this technique to go ahead and highlight because it doesn't overdo it and gives it the perfect amount of distressing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly apply some of that black acrylic paint to the paint stick. And then once I get um, on that craft stick, once I get that on there, all I'm going to do is take that craft stick and I'm just going to drag it over the surface of the tile. And what, it, what will happen is that the tile um, texture will start to pick up all of that color from your craft stick. Now you just want to keep on reapplying that paint and you can be as light or heavy handed as you want to. It just depends on the level of detail that you want to accomplish in your tiles. Now here is one of the corners done and you just want to repeat this all the way around the tile. And here is all of the tile, all nice and highlighted with our paint, and you want to allow this to completely dry. So now I'm going to grab the silver tile that we didn't paint, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use this Apple Barrel Red Barn Spray Paint, um, acrylic paint. What this acrylic paint does is it really does look like rust when it dries. Now you can make it a little darker by adding some brown or black if you want to, but what I'm going to do is use that same craft stick technique where I go in and dra drag and highlight all of those areas, and you want to do this all over the tile just like we did with the black. And here is what that tile looks like as it's starting to dry and I'm loving it. It looks so much like little rust accents on this. Okay, so now that our, all of our tiles had time to dry, what I'm gonna do is take the first tile and what I wanna do is I wanna cut it directly down the middle in half. Now these tiles are about 12 inches wide, so I'm just gonna make a line straight down the middle at the six inch mark. 
And then I'm just going to go in with a regular pair of scissors and then cut it completely in half. Now we're going to use the Waverly Antique Waxed Tiles to go in our stained frame. So these will be laying face down on the back of the frame, um, right one on top of the other. Now we need to join the tiles together before we put them in the frame. So we did leave that peel and stick backing on there. So I'm just going to trim off the peel and stick back portion of one of the pieces of our halved pieces of tile. Now once we remove that, we're going to uh, sit that on top of the edge of the other tile to kind of butt it right up and make sure that the pattern is lined up. Now to join them together, initially I am going to run a bead of hot glue along the bottom part of the tile that we did not cut off. We're just going to run a nice bead of hot glue there. And then we're going to take the tile piece that we trimmed off and we are going to join it right on top of that glue, making sure that it's nice and aligned and straight. Now, once that initial join is made, we are going to secure the back as well. And all we're going to do with this is I'm just taking some clear tape and I'm just going to go over that seam. I'm just going to start by adding one strip across that entire seam on the back, just making sure you press it nice and firm into place and make sure it's not peeling up on each end. Now to prevent those ends from coming up on the back, I'm going to go in with another strip of tape and this time I'm just going to use um, a half a strip of that tape. I'm going to cut this strip in half and then I'm going to put each one of those halves on each side of the back of your tile piece and this will just keep it from coming up later. So now that we have one solid piece, we are going to fit it to the opening on the back of the frame. Now, if your cuts were made perfectly, this should overlap about a quarter to a half of an inch on each side, allowing you plenty of room to secure it in place. Now, once you get your uh, tile piece nice and centered through that opening, I'm just going to place a piece of painter's tape on each end to make sure it doesn't shift while I secure it in place. And I'm just going to flip it over and check it. Now, once everything is in place, we can go around the edges with our staple gun and I'm just going to start in the middle and work my way out to each one of the sides. And once the middle and the sides are done with your stapling, you can go ahead and finish stapling all around the piece, not forgetting getting those corners locked into place as well. And it should be nice and secure. And then when you flip it over, it looks perfect in place like it's made to be there. And I'm loving how this looks. So now that that's done, we are going to add our hanger to our piece. And since this is a really lightweight piece, I'm just going to use my jute string tied with knots on each end. And I'm going to place it about an inch to an inch and a half down from the top of the frame. And then I am going to staple each side. Now I'm just going to apply a couple of staples on each side right where that knot is. Now you can hang these vertically or you can hang them horizontally. You can place your string however you want. But I chose to do mine um, in a vertical pattern. So I'm just going to staple this one jute string on the back for this project. And now this piece is ready to hang. So now that you're a pro, all you have to do is repeat the process for your white frame and your silver insert and also your black frame and your black and white insert. And when everything is done, here is your stained frame with the insert all completed. Here is what your black and white frame looks like completed. And finally, you have your white frame with your silver and rustic accents. And now it's time to hang these up. So here is how the wood frame looks hanging up and I think that it looks so awesome. Now by painting the tiles and then going in with the wax, it really gives it the look of beautiful aged stone and I absolutely love it. Now this is perfect for warm and cozy decor for your space and you can make as many as you like or how many you prefer. 
Now, if you're into black and white, I love this version of the white tile with the black accents. Now, this really reminds me so much of enamel wear and the paint application technique perfectly highlights and accents a normal wear pattern as if it's an older metal piece. Now, you can also display these sideways and even add hooks for your keys and trinkets at your entryway. And finally, here is the white frame with the rusted metal accents on the tile. Now, I love how the barn red color on these silver tiles look and how it picks up all of the details in the tile. Now, I really loved all of these different variations of this project today, and it's always hard for me to pick a favorite, so let me know in the comments which one of these versions was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you all next time.